Marissa, look. Look at him. Good job, Big Joe. We've got two. We got two red dogs. Oh my gosh, I wonder who the mom is. Well, it's 54 and I think it's uh, 11, the Texas, the both the Texas mamas. That's awesome. That one's a lot bigger than the other one. How a boy, I knew they were getting close. I knew they were. My gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. So Marissa and I were just working on fence. Cole's filming and the herd came up and sure enough, there's two red dogs here at the Ponderosa. This is crazy. We just worked our bison like a week ago. We try to work them before you know, they start having babies. And the earliest we've ever had a baby, I think was last year, Kid or Peaches had a baby May 6th. I think that's the earliest one we've had. Like my buddy in South Dakota, Scott, they had all their babies in April. Um, and down here in the South, we typically have them a little bit later. These two calves are uh, an early, early group. So, and those two calves must have been born really close to each other. So that means they must, those mamas must have been in heat all together. So if they, if we've got two red dogs born at the same time, that's a good sign. So the other ones should be following shortly right after. And I knew we were getting close. Marissa and I and Brooks have been coming down here and checking them. We only had two born here at the at the ranch at the Ponderosa last year, but this year we could have 11. But I think only I think uh, only we'll probably have nine because I don't know if two of them were old enough. This is exciting to see. So not only is it red dog season, the hoss herd has been in this pasture that we're currently in. But as you can see here, this is our native uh, pecan tree right here. And uh, we cleaned a bunch of this area out and we left our uh, native trees here, the pecan, and there's a ton of these on this property. And we love our pecan trees. So, but here you can see it's a good scratching post on this bark. And this time of the year, they are also shedding hair. So as it starts to heat up like today, it's supposed to get up to 90. Um, they they want to get rid of this is what they want to do. So they'll rub on this. They'll rub on. I've even seen them rub on barbed wire. Uh, it's crazy, but um, they'll rub on bushes, uh, any type of tree really, because this one I don't think is early enough or is old enough to uh, get pecans off to produce. But at some point it will. But good strong tree to provide some other opportunities for a bison. You can see how some how big some of them are because we, you know, tell how how you tell how big a hog is around here. Wild hogs, you look at the rubs on the trees and they'll rub the mud off, and you can see how big uh, your the hogs are on your property. So, thankfully, we don't have too many of those, but um, now you can see how big the bison are. They're rubbing. They even did that when I was in Alaska. Bear scratching posts, and you could see how tall the bears were, and they're like eight, that's, nine. That's feet scary. Up. I don't want to think about that. Scary. And right here in the middle of red dog season, we're talking about bears. <laughs> Got it. Got him. For now. We were so lucky to get the Big Joe herd worked. That's when we work our animals in April. And uh, 
We've never had red dogs in April. We know that we typically have them in May, but what you don't want to do is work those mamas and get them overstressed and cause a lot of those issues uh, with overstressing and possibly could abort the calf. Now, I think you'd really have to overstress them and overwork them uh, and if, if they did abort a calf, but that's why we try to work those animals in April because if you uh, have to work these mamas with a red dog, it would be very, very difficult. Uh, things get a way more dicier if you do that. That's when we try to get it done in mid-April because it's that transition of, of springtime weather. We're coming into summer and we really want to get the, that dewormer in them before all the, the microorganisms and everything going on down here starts to really evolve when it starts to heat up. Uh, the temperatures change, the, the soil starts to change temperatures and all the, the microorganisms and everything going on here and the, all that starts to increase and uh, the worm load, parasite load, all that can get going this time of the year, basically. They can get trampled, they could get hurt because they're, you know, these, when these guys are born, they're 30 or 40 pounds uh, average. Uh, they can be bigger, some of those red dogs can be bigger, but they're little guys, and if you're working them, it can create some uncomfortable situations and will affect how you handle your bison when you go to work them. And so that's why you got to get it done when you can. And, that, and sometimes people have issues where their pen's not ready or they can't get their bison up. And some ranchers may run into those issues. We were lucky to get them done in April, get them worked. And then just shortly after that, we've got two red dogs, which is, which is really exciting. Now, so last year what happened, we ran into an issue where um, this is where we questioned Big Joe if he had done his job or not. We loaded Big Joe up. You can go back and watch that video. I took him to my vet, Doc Parsons, in Stratford, Oklahoma, and we did a semen test on good old Big Joe. And uh, I was getting worried because we had five cows that typically have calves in May and June when they weren't having calves and they were not showing any signs. So I'm getting worried. Doc said, bring him up there. So we took him up to Gerald Parsons to Stratford Animal Clinic. And from there, what we did was got the semen test it came back positive everything was good swimmers were great excellent and uh i'll be dang we had a rainfall we had a really bad drought last year and august 20th it was like we had a little bit of rain and then all of a sudden we had we had three four and then five calves and eleanor is in that group and so like they just all hit like within two days of each other it was wild and i guess they were waiting on the rain or something like that but there's some, there's a red dog laying down right there. Um, you guys can't see him, but we had that happen. So we had some born in May and then we had some drop in August. That throws off their cycle a little bit. So those five from mom and Kevin's, the Dunbar herd, remember that was before we brought Big Joe over. So these babies now, those mamas can carry those calves for nine to 10 months, right? I, I say that the gestation period is long as a woman. Um, you're thinking, well, uh, how, how's how the, the Big Joes? Yep, they were Big Joe babies. Um, most of those ones that were born at Mom and Kevin's were Big Joe babies. So now they're over here. Marissa and I brought them over here. So anyways, it's a good thing we got them worked, but we're excited. Red dog season has started. It's uh, nice to come out here and see them for, with uh, Marissa and Brooks are with me and uh, Cole out here with us filming and stuff so we're going to be watching these mamas pretty close to uh, there's some more that are about ready to go so when when the ground hits when the red dogs start hitting they usually they should be synced up with each other because they typically come in heat about the same time so with that being said the hoss herd is getting ready to move to the burn unit and so we're going to do something special we're going to have our good friends ethan and cole fagan come out that were a part of that burn and helped get the prescribed burn ready and everything those guys are coming back i wanted them to be a part of that special moment of releasing the hoss herd into the burn unit and uh, so marissa and i moved them to the nine acres they're still held up in that pasture and we're getting ready to release them out so uh, that'll be very fun Thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you guys soon.